Today, we are going to learn how to do this. Now, if you're, if you're unfamiliar with phase plant, let me, let me show you phase plant uh, in a bit more of a comfortable perspective. Remind me later. So let's go to phase plant and click on this link. So this is phase plant. This is what phase plant normally looks like. It is a great product, and, and all of the Kilohertz products generally have this sort of color scheme where you have blue on gray. That's sort of the main Kilohertz design UI philosophy. If you go look at their other plugins like Multipass, you can see it has the same exact style of color layout. Before yesterday, or two days ago, pretty much, you had to make Phase Plant and, and Snap Heap and all the Kilohertz product look like this. You had to have the, the gray, blue, and orange color scheme just all set up. No customization options. Yesterday, in Discord, one of the Kilohertz team, this lovely man named Per Larson, posted a file. And that file allows you to completely reskin all, not, not completely, but at least um, partially reskin all of the Kilohertz products. You do need to update to 1.8.4. Um, I am putting this on YouTube, so if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please make sure that you are at the very least on 1.8.4, and if you're in the future, maybe a little check to see if there is a new way to do this in a later, more recent video that I will make or someone else will make about reskinning faceplant. But um, the way that this now works is in your kilohertz application data folder where you have all of these files right here. You can see the .confs, you can see you know a couple of subfolders, you can see the heart core uh, thing that Kilohertz uses as the backbone for all of their products. Um, and you will not see colors.conf at first. Uh, you have to download this file or create it. Um, there are two locations it can go in. Um, if you are on Windows, it would be in the C program data kilohertz folder. If you're on Mac, it's going to be in the, I believe this is the main user library. Yeah, this is the main user library under application support. Go to kilohertz right here, and then this will be the folder that you use. Put the .conf file that you download from the Kilohertz Discord from there. If you don't know how to get to the Kilohertz Discord, real easy way to do it. Um, open up, I think it's in every Kilohertz product. I could be wrong. Maybe it's not in Multipass. They should put it in Multipass. But uh, at the very least on Faceplant, if you click this little eye icon right there, uh, you can actually just click right here and you'll get a link to the Discord or <clears throat> Um, if you want, uh, you can probably find it on their website, I believe, under contact or FAQ. Or no, right down here, actually. Just go down to the bottom of any of the Kilohertz pages on their website and click on the Discord logo. You can get a link to their Discord, and that's where you can find it either uh, here in the general channel, um, and there's also the new skins channel where I'm sure it's probably pinned. Yeah. It's pinned right here. It's hidden behind my face. Um, let me minimize this for a second. But if you look at the pinned posts, right down here, this will be the starting point. This is where you put it. And uh, we'll talk about this in a second. Someone actually went ahead and made a Windows application to uh, <clears throat> do all the stuff that we're about to do. They're working on a Mac version. They're working on a web version too. Um, so... If you want to just wait until that, or if you want to go ahead and download that, that'll sort of save you a lot of time. 
but in case you don't have uh, windows or in case you want to go in and do things a little bit more personalized um, I'm gonna walk you through the process so first things first you want to open up uh, the colors.conf in whatever text editor you're using um, any like you know notepad works uh, text edit works if you have like a particular programming editor that you think looks better like sublime text or whatever totally fine because this is basically just a just a, a JavaScript like a, I think they call it like a JSON JSON I don't know the I'm not a programmer full disclosure I don't I know a little bit but uh, I'm assuming I think that's supposed to be the, the framework for this um, and <clears throat> as you can see there's two sections to this you have original and then you have all the stuff that's just labeled as the thing, like window background, panel background, text, etc. cetera. Um, this is the starting point. So if at any point you want to uh, kind of start over, uh, you can just go ahead and, and copy each one of these over to these uh, parameters and it should just default back to the starting point. From there, you just have to start um, looking at each color that is there and start to Honestly, decide on the type of background you want, the type of skin you want, because it's essentially just a color palette swap with the ability to add a picture inside. Um, so I would recommend using a website like Color Hexa. This is what I used. Uh, essentially, I, I looked for the, the sort of color scheme that I like. Um, as you can see, there's lots of options people have come up with for how to reskin uh, the plugin. This might give you a couple of different ideas on how you can approach it. Um, keep in mind, this is going to be across every single Kilohertz product you have. So as far as I'm aware, you cannot change uh, the multi-pass skin to be different from, say, the phase plant skin. It's going to be on everything. Uh, but it does look really nice, and this can give you some ideas, even more uh, eclectic ideas. I mean, I honestly think this looks awesome. <laughs> I think this looks pretty cool. But, you know, there's a few different ways you can approach it. Think about it like, you know, if you had a color palette that you uh, really, really enjoyed, Maybe it's the color palette for your logo. Why not just sort of go in with that? Like you could even reskin it to look more like serum. You could reskin it to look more like um, your DAW, for example. Um, and that's sort of what my approach was, um, where I generally have this sort of like purple kind of uh, pastel color scheme. I like a lot of um, cool, but not like blue color palettes. Um, a lot of muted hues. So when I was going through this, I basically just put in a color. Like, let's say I put in the color for the the window background, which is kind of like the, the main hue of uh, the uh, face plant patch and the different uh, multi-pass patches and stuff like that. And then you just sort of pull it in and I just started looking for variations. This one started off black, so you know you can also just put in random colors just by typing in a, I think this is one, two, three, four, five, like a six digit value. And then it's like, okay, so I like purple. Let's go in here and let's start looking at different shades. Um, like I think I want it to be kind of dark because this actually colors, um, the background image. Uh, that's the reason why in multipass I have this sort of background image is much darker purple. Um, whereas if you look at the original picture, it is pretty purple. Um, but it's not like overwhelming. I guess it is pretty purple, honestly. But like the, you see all these pink hues really start to fade out into the background because of the overlay. And from there, it's it's honestly super simple. It's basically just pick your colors. Um, 
you are going to have to reload the plugins to get it to count any changes that you make. So it's not going to be an immediate thing. Uh, typically what I did is I, I went down through like either a group or at first I did every single one. I set every single color to be close to what I thought would look good, saved it, and then I just, uh, with only face plant open, I just deleted the patch and then reloaded a face plant. And you can sort of A, B test different things. Like uh, for example, let's say I want to change uh, the text color. So let's see, right now the text color is kind of like this. Uh, light pink, a little bit of orange in there. So let's see. Yeah, this is kind of like the yeah, very light pink. And typically I look for analogous colors or complementary colors. Let's say, let's use a complementary color like this one. Let's go ahead and add that in. What did we say that was for text? So let's save that. Go ahead and restart phase plant. There we go. Yeah, that actually looks kind of nice. I might actually keep that. That actually looks really nice. But this is all the same color now. The only other thing I guess to really talk about is about these backgrounds. Now, <clears throat> uh, there's two considerations. One is uh, the actual layout of the image. Now, it is a scalable uh, UI, so the image should be able to stretch out, um, but more importantly, it should be taller than it is wide. Because the image, uh, or the, the UI for the different kilohertz products generally can be much taller than they can be wide because they're designed to really open up for a lot of effect chains. So looks like multipass can be a little bit wider. Actually, looks like multipass can be super wide and not as tall. But you can see like with this image, it doesn't quite go all the way down because the image I have right now is very, very um, circular. Um, or excuse me, it's very, very wide. So when I go to these full tall uh, perspectives, we lose the actual image. So it doesn't really scale. Um, it just sort of like puts it at the maximum width resolution. And I think the same is true with Snap Heap. And as you can see, you can actually have different skins for Phase Plant and Multipass and Snap Heap at least in terms of the background image. So you can use that to sort of customize things. And here is, I guess, a good way to visualize the different aspect ratios. Um, I actually think it might be good to use the same image for all three real quick. And that's a good way to show you how to do this. So uh, typically, uh, the images seem to work best with PNG. I haven't tested JPEGs. I haven't tested um, uh, GIFs either. I've only tested PNGs and all the PNGs that I've tested have seemed to work. They do need to be inside of the kilohertz program data folder. Make sure that the image is in your um, program data folder and then in the CONF file, uh, it's gonna be one of these three, the backdrops. Um, so like, let's set this to, let's take this picture, fractal depth, and let's replace it with the face plant backdrop. And then all we gotta do is close all this down, delete phase plant, reopen it. And now, you can see the image has changed. You can also see really clearly how the dimensions of this picture don't quite line up. So if we look at the one that I have, it's currently an 800 by 600 picture. Um, so if I open up that and then show you all the different versions of it, this should give you some sort of visual reference for how you can scale your pictures uh, to fit in with these different hosts. 
as you can see with uh, Phase Plant, it's the least problematic one of the three. Like, I don't think there's too much of a problem with all this up here. And this looks actually kind of natural right down here. Um, but with multi-pass, it's a little bit more obvious because it only cuts off the bottom. And then with Snap Heap, you really want to have a vertical image for Snap Heap, for sure. Um, but depending upon how often you use Phase Plant, Multipass, or Snap Heap like this, uh, you might end up never even seeing it. So, you know, take that as you will. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, but with that being said, that's actually all there is to it. It's a nice, short, simple tutorial. Um, <clears throat> please share with me some of your colors.com files. Show me some of your reskins of Phase Plant. You can either send them to me or you can send them to the Skins channel in Discord on the Kilohertz server. You can see there's already a lot of submissions people have already been doing. You can see there's a bunch of colors.conf. So it might even be good to just search for uh, colors.conf. Uh, like I mentioned, Fabulo19 in the uh, Kilohertz Discord has actually made a program for Windows. Uh, you can go download that right now. It's in the pinned posts in the skins channel in the kilohertz discord it's right there i know it's a couple of steps but you can grab that it allows you to edit and visualize all the colors as you go rather than kind of having to go back and forth like i did um it allows for uh hue saturation tint and uh, i think amount is supposed to be like opacity or intensity or something like that and then you can also import and export uh, all these different configuration files as well as save it directly to the folder so that you don't have to actually uh, find the program data folder on your computer. You can just load it in. So already there are things there. This is technically like a quote unquote power user feature. This is not an officially supported feature. This is kind of an unofficially supported feature. Um, so if it gives you any major errors, understand that, you know, you signed up for this. You're the one who picks the colors. Also make sure if you do export a skin that has a background image to export the configuration file in a zip file with, uh, the picture so that people can, uh, use it. Oh yeah. And make backups. Uh, there is, there is always the original uh, color scheme so you can always just like go back whoops go back and like change all of the colors back to normal if you really don't like it um, but yeah it is good to have uh, like different backups like you could have a folder and maybe you could name one like you know x uh, colors dot com and then this one y colors dot com and then just swap them out as you go um, so have fun with it, mess around, share with me your skins, definitely. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and click the bell thing, and uh, follow me on social media. Also, if you're watching on Twitch, follow me on social media. Uh, please follow me on Twitter. Uh, please, if you're watching on YouTube, follow me on Twitch. That's where I'm doing these streams. I do this every weekday, uh, Monday through Friday. Um, that's every weekday, right? Yes. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, this is going to be where I cut the video.